right, we're live. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Divi Chat. Each week, some of the brightest minds from around the world get together to share their knowledge and expertise of running businesses and developing websites with WordPress and Divi. Tonight, you'll be listening to episode 48, where we'll be discussing burnout, recognizing, coping, and overcoming it. Let's get chatting. But before we do, Let's say hello to tonight's esteemed panel. Hey, Corey. Esteemed, I like that. Corey Jenkins, Aspen Grove Studios, Divi Space, uh, WordPress developer, and uh, yeah, go Dodgers. Go Dodgers. Glad you're here, Corey. Hey, Josh. What's up, everybody? My name is Josh Hall. I'm a web developer from Columbus, Ohio. My business is called In Transit Studios, and I have a new Divi site that has all my Elegant Themes blogs, some tutorials, and other Divi goods, and you can find that uh, if you're looking online or if you're on YouTube, you can see my new uh, signature at joshhall.co. Glad you're here, Josh. Hi, Kathy. Oh, hey, guys. Kathy Carl Romano, Viva Design Studio. I'm just a lowly developer. We're glad you're here, Kathy. Thank you. Hey, Leslie. Hi. Um, Leslie Bernal here of A Girl in Her Mac. You can find me at agirlinhermac.design. Boom. Glad you're here, Leslie. Hey, Nathan. Oh, hey. Um, Nathan Weller. Uh, Nathan B. Weller, not to be confused with other Nathan Wellers online, um, <laughs> particularly with different initials if you happen to model. <clears throat> um, so glad you said that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm the Elegant Themes content manager, and I help make sure that all the uh, blog posts, YouTube videos, live streams, et cetera, come out of Elegant Themes to the uh, amazing, wonderful, one-of-a-kind Divi community. Boom. So glad to have you here, Nathan. That is awesome. Sarah. Hey, guys. I'm Sarah Oates from Endure Web Studios, and you can find me at endure.com.au. So glad you're here, Sarah. Hi, Terry. Oh, I didn't see me next in line. I thought Tim was for me. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Terry Hale, Mysegorn Inc. And be super fly. Oh, yeah. oh represent. Uh, yeah. I'm so jealous. They look so beautiful. I know. Uh, and they're comfy, too. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, just look for Mysegorn in your search bar or check out be superfly dot. Tom. Boom. So glad you're here, Terry. Hey, Tim. Hey, everybody. Tim Streifler here, and you can find me online at timstreifler.com and divilife.com. And in the interest of showing off our shirts, I'm repping Pagely. Never use their products, uh, but apparently <laughs> they have good hosting, but they also have very comfortable shirts. So <laughs> It's all about the t-shirt. Exactly. All about the I've got my Dion, guys. Doing the oh, Dion. Right, all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm so glad everybody's here. My name is David Blackman with Aspen Grove Studios, Divi Space, Divi Chat, and now live WP the podcast. Go check it out. My short Woo. plug. Um, we are going to be talking about something that probably just about everybody suffers with at some point or another if you work in your lifetime. It's called burnout. You know, and, and we're going to kind of break it up into three segments. And I don't really know where this is going to go. I'm going to kind of let the panel kind of share their experience, talk about, you know, things that they've done, how they knew they were suffering from burnout, what they've done to cope with it and overcome it. So uh, those are some of the things that we're going to talk about today. Burnout. Does anybody want to dive in and start first or do I need to give Wikipedia's definition of what job burnout is. I'll go ahead and jump in. Um, I think this topic is especially important. I, I think, as David mentioned, if you work at all, burnout is important, but I think it's especially important for entrepreneurs, freelancers, uh, people that work from home, because when you don't have coworkers and, and other people to bounce things off of, um, it's just you, you and your computer and, um, yeah, the work piles up. Uh, if you're working from home, then you tend to want to work all the time. And so it's hard to get that work-life balance. And so burnout is, is something that's very real. For me, what has been uh, really crucial is this right here, which is community. Having people 
online, even though I don't have coworkers, I have colleagues that are other places around the world, but people that I can bounce ideas off of. Uh, David and I will, will call it, do a, a face-to-face -face calls over Slack or Skype just to vent, like we're frustrated just to vent. And I think that is crucial and that's something that's really helped me not um, feel burnout. Thanks for jumping in there, Tim. You're welcome. I could keep talking, but I, I'm gonna let you. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say real quick, just because I'm so passionate about this, because similar to Tim, you know, when you work from home alone, you can drive yourself crazy, or your clients can drive you crazy. <laughs> Uh, for me, I'll keep this really brief, but for me, one thing that has been a real lifesaver is to set up a pretty disciplined daily routine that I try to stick to. In my case, there's a couple things that have really helped. Um, ultimately, you want to run your day. You don't want your day to run you. And I think that's one of the biggest things that you can, you can help avoid burnout. Uh, for me, I have email segments throughout the day, so I'll do email first thing in the morning, generally around lunchtime, and then around the end of the day. Sometimes I'll have my email on periodically, but you know, segmenting my email so I'm not getting dinged all day has really helped me. I generally have two to three main uh, things I do a day, so like one might be maybe uh, one project that I, I work on the front page and a sub page for a couple hours and I do more emailing. Then the, my next phase of the day will be you know another project I'm working on. But the thing that has been most beneficial to me that I wanna offer you guys and the whole Divi community as a whole is to set a period of your day out for reactionary work. So every day I leave, generally it's about an hour. Uh, for me, three to four usually works pretty well because it's towards the end of the day. But every day I leave an hour at least of a segment to where I can get to any reactionary work that I need to do. That way I can turn my email off, I can turn my phone off, I can stay creative and protect my creative time. But I know I'll have that hour later in the day if I happen to see an email come through that says, hey, you know, we have a widget down or something like that. That way I don't have to break my focus and my creativity. And that reactionary block throughout the day has just been a lifesaver for me. So that's a big thing that I wanted to, to kind of put out there. I do something really similar um, from 3.30 to 5 every day for me is what I call my open block. So I have the whole rest of my day really regimented, but from 3.30 to 5, I can take any project I'm working on or um, anything that doesn't fit into a daily task or routine and put it there. And I, I created my own planner, <laughs> which is kind of nerdy and I don't think most people do that, but, um, but I think I, Sarah I, does that. Sarah does. <laughs> oh, nice. We'll have to compare yeah. templates. Um, <laughs> so I, I write in my, on one side of my planner, like tasks that come up throughout the day. So instead of doing something right away, when someone tells me about it, I just write it down and then I get back to what I was doing. And then when I hit my open block, I go, do I have time for this? And if I do, I go ahead and schedule it for the day. And if I don't, I just turn the page of my planner and I put one of those tasks on the next day. And then I Sit, uh, take a second and go, Hey, by the way, you know, to the, whoever asked me to do the thing, I'll probably get around to this on, you know, Wednesday or Thursday or whatever. Um, that way I, they know what's going on. I know what's going on. And there's just no stress of this like mountain of work building up, which is, I think uh, there's this awesome quote. Um, I'm really into um, like stoic philosophy right now. And Seneca, who's one of the philosophers said, you know, we suffer most in our imagination or we suffer more in our imagination than we do in reality. And I think for a lot of freelancers, that mountain of undone to-dos can be such a big cause of stress and suffering. Uh, just thinking about it and thinking about how hard it's going to be or whether or not you're going to get to it or whether or not you've forgotten anything. Um, having both that open block and a system for dealing with new things and scheduling them quickly has been a big way for me to avoid thinking about stuff when I don't need to be thinking about it and therefore suffering when I don't need to be suffering. So, And, and that's a big thing because I think about it from the minute I wake up until the minute I go to sleep. And then while I'm asleep, I'm still thinking about it. I just can't turn it off. So then I get up in the middle of the night because I'm oh, just, man. yeah, because I can't stop thinking about it. And I just have to, you know, jump on it and do the work in the middle of the night. I'm so sure yeah, I, I need that. I'm sorry. I said, I'm sure we've all had work nightmares. <laughs> yeah. Mine yeah, is every night. <laughs> I wanted to say something to, to Nathan's point, um, you know, having that mountain of, of tasks kind of built up in your head and you internalize it 
and, and think it's way worse than it actually is. And so some of that's kind of helped me because I do that a lot. And like Kathy said, I'll, I'll think about it for, you know, while I'm trying to go to sleep and it'll like stress me out, which when you're stressed out, sleeping is not easy. And mm -hmm. so what's helped me is having a, a soundboard, you know, telling my wife kind of walking through everything I have on my list and then just like speaking it and, and saying it out loud kind of makes it a reality instead of something that's just internal. And then I kind of realize, oh, it's not actually that crazy of a task list. And then I can also, that helps me kind of think it through, you know, how I'm going to knock out each one of those things. Well, I can go, I guess. <laughs> since go ahead, still, Terry. Since we're still uh, early in the show, uh, man, it's a lot of good stuff so far. Um, but Terry, you're can... chopping up a little bit. Is... Am I? Just a little. Is anybody else hearing that? Yeah. A little choppy. Yep. Yeah, a little choppy. Okay. Choppy, choppy, choppy hail. Let me talk. <laughs> Tell your kids to quit streaming the Netflix right. and playing yes. online video games, Terry. I guess so. Um, there we go. There we go. You're better. There you go, Terry. I now just shut know. down Firefox. Maybe that was it. Boo. Oh, anyway. oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, oh, so much good stuff. I'm going to have to re-listen to this and take a bunch of notes, but... Since we're still early in the show, we've been talking about how to deal with it, but we haven't really spent a lot of time talking about what is it and what are the signs. Yeah. So it. I'll just go over that real quick. Uh, I made some notes. Here are some signs. You know, you say everybody talks about burnout. Well, what, what is burnout? Well, maybe you're burned out if uh, you have a point of low motivation, which sometimes can be just lack of willpower, but we're talking about burnout here. So real burnout is not a lack of willpower. Uh, things are going okay. And then you run into one little problem and your excitement just crashes. You're just not interested anymore. Or you spend too much time on that one little problem and it sucks time away from the whole project and you just, you've lost your motivation. And then you start feeling overwhelmed and to the point where if, if I get one more tweet, one more email, one more message, one, one more phone call, I'm going to scream and just cast myself off a cliff or something. I just want people to leave me alone. And then you start cutting corners. You don't have any enthusiasm or energy to finish your project, even when you're almost done. You say, well, this is just, this will be good enough. I'm so tired of looking at this thing. I don't want to do it anymore. They're not going to notice. And if they notice, somebody notices, they'll put in a support kick. I'll just deal with it later. I just want to get this done. And that's because your brain isn't working. Instead of working on what you love, you'd rather sleep or binge Netflix or read a bunch of big books, which is what I've been doing lately. So uh, those are the types of things that made me actually want us to all to talk about this. So that will define for us what burnout is in a lot of cases. And then hey Terry, that's been not, to inter not, to, not to interrupt you yet, but you are choppy again, real quick. And I, I know you're saying a lot of real valuable stuff. So um, let's let's see if we can get the mic cleared up again because it's not coming clear through. And um, I know the stuff that you're. I have a list here, and it's funny because I was thinking the same exact thing when you started talking. It's like, okay, I threw the threw it out there, and we went to the middle. And we kind of skipped right. the beginning, which is how do you notice the signs of what are some of the signs of burnout, which you've named quite a bit. Lack of enthusiasm, lack of impatience. You know, you're intolerant. You don't want to finish tasks. You have all of these things right. that are going on and making it short and stuff. And those are some of the signs of burnout, you know. So um, I don't know if your mic's cleared up yet or not, but I figured I'll just, it. it's a team just, effort. Right. I'll just I'll okay. list the four bullet points and then everybody else can expand on it. Does that sound okay? Yeah, yeah that cutting, sounds good. Okay, Absolutely. cutting corners. Why do you cut corners? How do you cut corners? Feeling overwhelmed, low motivation, and your brain stops working. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good sign. <laughs> yeah, that, you might, I, folks. You heard it here first. <laughs> if your brain stops working, you might be suffering. You might from have burnout. burnout. Yeah. I think uh, irritab irritab uh, irritability, we could probably add on to that too, because that's a big one for me. I know yeah. I'm not typically that irritable, but if I find myself, you know, 
being kind of snippy with clients. I'm like, man, what? Is it really the client's problem or is it my problem? That's a big one for me. Yeah, it's a good point. I, I've got that one listed here, kind of all in the same chunk, which is have you become irritable or impatient with coworkers, customers, or clients? Or and spouses. to me, that's a, yeah, or spouses. That's right. <laughs> um, that's a sign, a, a telltale sign that, that, that I probably need to step away, walk back. You know, there's some old sayings. The older I get, the more I realize the value in these really old sayings. You know, you need to get some fresh air. You know, I always just used to think, oh, well, that's a nice little saying. I need some fresh air. But it's really applicable. You know, when you step out, you get fresh air, you get into nature, you clear your head. It does something to your body physically and your mental state and your emotional state, which I think those three things are the signs of, of burnout is it affects all three of those states, mental, physical, and emotional. So, you know, get some fresh air, step outside, step away, clear your head. And it, it's really, really beneficial. So who else? I think there's another thing to add to um, the list, I think, and maybe it's been uh, mentioned, but just um, complaining. Like if you find yourself complaining a lot, you know, that's a huge one where, you know, I know when I'm feeling great and I run into a problem, I'm like, interesting, but if, <laughs> you know, I got to solve a new problem. But if I'm feeling burnout and I encounter a problem, you know, I want to text my wife and be like, you'll never believe what I have to do. <laughs> you know? And if that's every day, then, you know, there's a problem, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I don't know if it's just coincidental or if somebody planned this uh, episode to fall on world mental health day. Oh, uh, which, yeah. which today actually is. Um, That's right. That for me, um, <laughs> you know, for me, I, I, I suffer from anxiety. I, I've had it for years and years. And for me, burnout and anxiety kind of go hand in hand. So I've got this like vicious cycle of um, getting burned out, getting stressed, thinking too many things over in my head, which leads to anxiety, which leads to insomnia, which leads to just this like snowball effect of, uh, you know, of, of uh, burnout basically. And sometimes by the end of the week, I'm like, you know, just completely spent just because I'm not sleeping. I'm thinking too much. I have anxiety. My heart's going, uh, you know, a hundred miles an hour. And, uh, you know, so, so for me, that's, that, that's my burnout. I don't, I don't really get the lack of motivation. It's probably like the opposite for me, but I know I'm burned out and I know when I probably shouldn't be working or doing something important. And, um, you know, David and I are honest enough with each other. I'll, I'll tell him, Hey David, I'm, I'm having a bad day, like anxiety wise. And you know, if, if I seem a little off or something, but, um, yeah, th those are all signs, uh, you know, get a little, little snappy, a little short, um, and, uh, cutting corners. I, I, I don't know. I don't know about for me cutting corners, but maybe, you know, you're not there hundred percent focused mentally where you subconsciously cut corners on things just cause you want to get it off, off your list, which, I'm a huge list guy. I like check it off and I feel better. So this is slightly on topic, but hearing some of these signs, irritability, um, you know, lack of motivation, I'm thinking about, it, I'm like, man, I feel that pretty much every day. And then, <laughs> then I eat lunch and I feel a hundred times better because I get very hangry. <laughs> hangry, Tim. I get, yeah, no, honestly, it's like oh, a thing. With some of my, my friends, yeah, back in, yeah, exactly. But some of my friends back in California, like we would have a hashtag hangry Tim. Like it was like a <laughs> fact that if Tim did not eat, it would be very unfun to be around. So, um, yeah, don't confuse burnout with needing to eat lunch <laughs> with low blood sugar. Low blood sugar, yes. exactly. So, t so Tim, your email time is right after lunch, not right before it. I'm, I'm yes, assuming. yeah, right before lunch, like pounding the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess kind of takes us into maybe something else that we can talk about. We've talked a lot about symptoms and a lot of things that cause it. What are some of the things we can do to help with burnout? So Tim mentioned food, mm -hmm. eating obviously taking care of yourself. I mentioned taking a walk, getting outside. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Who else wants to? I'll, I'll go because I, I don't know if I'm doing it wrong because <laughs> when I, um, I got burnt out on made, making uh, custom websites, so I just stopped doing it. Um, <laughs> thankfully, I had other ways of gaining income, but, um, but I definitely found myself um, I, I got more into white label work. So somebody else deals with the client. Um, I strict, 
stick pretty much exclusively with design um, and CSS, and that's about it. Um, so, so yeah, I guess that was kind of my way of dealing with it. Now, obviously, that's not going to work every time. Um, I can't just go shifting what I do uh, too many times. But, but thankfully, in in what we do, there are different ways that where you can kind of you know focus your your strengths or whatever. Um, but, but yeah, I I got real burnt out on making websites like the whole the whole custom thing <laughs> so i just deal with front end now so what did you do so you basically you poo pooed it <laughs> yeah i just, just stopped taking custom web life. clients okay. i just um turned them away or you know referred them to other people um and like i said i just happened to be in a position where i had white label work and i um had good relationships with those people uh we ended up it so happened more work was coming so it just kind of worked out that way but um but yeah <laughs> So you shifted your focus to doing more work that you enjoy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mentioned at the beginning, and again, that was my bad for kind of <laughs> skipping to the middle, but I, I talked about community and how community can be um, a great way to um, avoid burnout. Um, another thing for me is, uh, you know, find a hobby or something that other than work to take your mind off of work and, and be able to focus on. And my wife decided to start printing something right as I started talking. So apologies, uh, the printer's right next to me. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Um, but like, for example, a couple weeks ago, I got invited to a poker game and that was like just what I needed at the right time. Cause I was able to completely like unplug and not think about my business at all. Not think about like what I needed to do, like get out and have fun and laugh. And that was like a huge thing. And it's something that like, I think, oh yeah, I'm nearing my 30s now, like hanging out with friends. That's something like, you know, I did in college. Like I don't need to hang out with friends, but like actually doing it was so rewarding and reminded me like, oh yeah, this is, friendships are good, so. It's nice being with other people. <laughs> yeah, and I want to know when I'm in Austin, what night is poker night so I can make sure that I'm there. Because it sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say, I feel bad for Tim for I must be in 30. Yeah, <laughs> let's not even go there. <laughs> I I agree with you, Tim. I'm I'm the same way when it came to the hobbies uh, thing. You know, my my biggest I would say in the last couple years, the thing that's helped me avoid um, or at least keep burnout at bay has been, um, oddly enough, adding a few more things to my calendar. So, but that comes with a big caveat, right? So it's like we don't have any extra time, right? Nobody has infinite time. But I think what contributes to burnout is filling all of your time with the same thing over and over again. So like for me, what I did was um, I got involved with a local community um, called the Humanist Community here in Columbus. It's just a nonprofit that does a lot of good stuff around town. And I just started pitching in. And I, and I said, you know what? After 5 p.m., this takes priority. If I've got work, it gets bumped to the next day because once 5 p.m. rolls around, work's no longer my priority. I've put in my hours for the day or six or whatever the stopping point is for the day. And it was weird. It was like I was actually doing more but coming back to work every day more refreshed because I was getting out from behind my desk. I was engaging with people in my community. I had new friendships and new experiences that were rejuvenating me emotionally. And all of a sudden, you know, um, I was more focused during my work time because I knew I, I didn't have this, you know, never ending slog of hours where it was like, I'll wake up, sit at my computer until I go to bed and then do the same thing over again. It's like a never ending work day. But when I broke it up with other activities, I actually ended up doing more, but feeling like I had uh, a lot more energy, which was weird, but cool. That's that awesome. awesome. And yeah. David, for your information, Poker Night is October 20th this month. So <laughs> October 20th. Everybody hear that out there? Nice. Oh. Oh, man, I think I'm going to be there. If there's, like, if, there's a couple thousand dollars, if there's a couple thousand dollars missing from the company account, I'll have David Poker Night. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, I was curious do Australians get burnout or do you guys just have fun down under and hop around with kangaroos and stuff? No, we're just like totally chilled out all the time and we never get burned out ever. Um, <laughs> no, we definitely get burned out. Um, I think everybody's the same, well, in terms of being able to experience the same sort of things. I think uh, for people who are working on their own and running their own business, it's really common for people to get burnout. Like for me, I found last year a pretty hard year with 
just the amount of work that was needed. Like as my business was ramping up, I just felt like I didn't have enough hours to fit in all of the work that I was taking on and I was continually overscheduling work and not being able to fit it all into what was coming up. And I think that's still a challenge for me. But mm. I think one of the, for me, one of the main things that ends me up in burnout is just saying I'm going to do more than I can achieve. Like actually feeling my my workload so full that all of a sudden I just can't do any of it. Um, and th that's probably the number one reason that I get burnt out. The number two reason would be self-sabotage through um, procrastination. So there's particular parts of my job that I feel a little inadequate to do. And so when I come to those jobs, I tend to clean the house or I tend to like do other things instead, or I suddenly decide I need a new to-do list system. Um, and so then all of a sudden I'm like spending all this time doing these things that are completely not priority one. Um, and then that then builds to the same thing where I have too many things to fit into my little schedule of work. Um, and again, alongside that, probably back to the points that have come before, the other thing that tends to lead to it for me is just working all the time. Like last year, I, I probably was working during the day and then the kids would come home, I'd feel stressed out, I'd try to work a little bit while they like doing things for them and then they go to bed and then I'd keep working and then I'd go to bed with it all rattling around in my brain and then I'd probably dream about it and then I'd wake up in the morning and then on the weekends I'd be trying to multitask between doing stuff with the kids and working and I just felt like I was working all the time, like just all the time. Um, and I think it's really tricky when you're running a small business because we're not just building websites or we're not just doing client meetings. We're doing accounting and we're sending um, proposals and invoices and following up bits and pieces and running a business in itself, like aside from the actual work we're doing, is a huge amount to fit in to such a small amount of time. And I think often for me, I can think, oh, yeah, all I'm doing is building these like three websites or whatever, but I'm also doing all this running of a business, which really probably takes me a whole day a week. That's and such I don't a good always point. Account for that. That's such a good point, Sarah, because I feel like a lot of family and friends and even a lot of my clients will often say like, oh, that must be so nice just to work from home. Like I'm up in <laughs> for three hours in the morning and then eating cereal in my jams while I'm, you know, building a website on the side. I don't think people realize how, number one, how hard it is to turn it off because all you have to do is just pop up in your computer to work. I mean, everyone can, you know, a lot of people in different uh, industries can work from home now, but particularly us, if we are working from home, it is, it is very challenging to kind of separate your life and turn that off. So no, I, I back up everything you're saying for sure. Yeah. yeah. I so I, I've got some strategies. Oh, sorry. Do you want to talk David? No, no, no. Ooh, I, didn't I didn't realize oh, you had I was strategies. Say, <laughs> some of the things that I've implemented between last year and this year that have made a really big difference to me. So um, one of the things that I've, I'm trying really hard to implement, which I'm not always 100% on, is not working after dinner time and then not working on the weekends, which has meant that I have, have had to got, get a lot more productive during the day. So I think part of my problem was I was working all these hours, but I wasn't working all the hours if that makes sense like I was kind of half productive and so what I've realized is I need to be super super productive during my work hours and then not work at night time and not work on the weekends um, and still do the same amount of work but just pack it in much more firmly during the the work days um, and so what that's achieved for me is at night time I can actually like calm down a little bit so at night time I'll watch some tv or um, just chill out and to go to sleep because my mind still rattles quite a lot. I listen to audiobooks um, and I can't listen to podcasts because they they are too exciting. Um, like they get my brain sparked up. Um, totally. So I do yeah. audiobooks yeah. during, I mean, <laughs> podcasts during the day, but at night time I, I buy books off audible.com and I just get like, just, I wouldn't, um, just like not brain thinking ones. So you know, something that'll just let me go to sleep. I put a 15 minute timer on and that just helps my brain to get away from work. And when I don't do that, I usually dream about work stuff. Um, and then on the weekends, I try really hard not to open my computer and it's changed the way I'm working completely. And I would say it's changed the amount of stress that I've got. Um, so that's one thing. I'll come back later with some others. And that's I, almost exactly what I do too, Sarah. 
down to the audiobooks, setting the no work on weekends <laughs> and no work after dinner. It's like yeah. those are the those are the things that I implemented. It's funny because uh, right before I don't know if this was when we were on or right before we got on, but the article that Terry linked up uh, was mine from 2012. Um, I've been struggling with burnout in a number of years in different jobs, and because it's something that doesn't just go away. Um, as your situations change, burnout comes in different forms um, or it comes from different circumstances rather. Um, but yeah, so like all the way back then, the audiobooks and, and, and what exactly we were talking about have been real steady parts of my life. I, I wouldn't trade those things for the world. It sounds like Nathan and Sarah kind of hit on a point that uh, I really apply, tried to apply to my life this year. And it was based off a book called Rework, which is by the guys from Basecamp, which I would highly recommend checking out. But one of the main points I got from that was they talk about the fact that you don't need more hours, you need better hours. And so I think those really kind of echo that, that quote. Yeah, I was just going to say to that point, Josh, um, I think at least from my experience, when I do take a break over the weekend and I am not working way late tonight, into the night and I, you know, after dinner, stop working. Um, naturally I have more productive hours, better hours because I'm able to unplug and get my mind off it. When I do come back, I'm way more focused, way more productive. And so I think at least for me, it happens naturally. I don't have to like try extra hard to have more productive hours. When I take a break, it, that's, it causes me to have more productive hours. I think one of the things that Sarah said for me, that is very, very true okay. is if I cannot turn on the computer, if I turn the computer on, because the computer is can also be an entertainment device for me, Netflix or whatever it is, it's very hard not to open up work stuff. And I guess my own little story here, I was talking with with Nathan when we first logged on before we went live. You know, I've kind of I've kind of come to some realizations this year. Um, my whole routine for what I do to take care of myself got turned upside down. So I threw myself into, I don't, I don't get to do what I want to do, which is to hike, be in nature, go to the different places and do the different things. I was pretty much forced to be in a, the same location, you know, for an extended period of time dealing with some stuff. So I just kind of worked and worked and worked. And what I realized is that even though I love what I do and you know, if, so they say if you find what you love, what you do, it's, you never work a day in your life. And that's true. However, it can have ill effects because you it's hard to shut it off, you know. So dove off into the work stuff. And I think I've realized this week just how much I need to get away, just how much I, I need desperately to shut down the work stuff. And for me, it's primarily very difficult to not turn on that dang computer because I have a phone, I've got an iPad, I've got a, a MacBook Pro, I've got <laughs> you name it. Every time I turn around, there's an electronic device <laughs> in my hand or in my face. And it's like, I cannot not have email hours like Josh. <laughs> I'm not that disciplined yet. Uh, the, the, the notifications, man, the, the Slack, and uh, it, it, you, you got to try, try to figure out a way to like, after a certain time, mitigate the notifications. So I put on I put on my phone like I snooze my phone from oh, I can't remember what time of night nine at night to like eight in the morning and it doesn't always work because if you're on your phone like I'll lay in bed and check baseball news and uh, news stories and you'll see all the stuff pop up but um, you have notifications your phone constantly buzzing in your in your pocket is just I, like I should preface too I, I'm not perfect at that I don't do that every day but I do try to stick with that as much as possible and it just hit me earlier this year I remember I did work on a Saturday and I got so much done in like four hours I think I worked from like nine to one and I got so much done and I was like wait a minute what's the, what was the difference here between yesterday well there was no email there was no notifications I didn't have my you know no, no clients were calling and so that just kind of made me rethink you know my day and just kind of protect my really it was all about protecting my creativity which is yeah. what helps me avoid burnout right yeah your, your clients don't oh, your, your go clients ahead. don't contact you on the weekends really because <laughs> I contact me all week at and night, all day, all <laughs> night, every day, 24 That is a boundary seven. issue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have no boundaries. That's, that's a big part of my problem is no boundaries. And the other thing that really yeah. I, I struggle with is if I'm not working, I'm not making money. You know, my husband gets to come home at 530. 
and he's still going to get paid even though he's home, you know, because he has an annual salary. I get a project fee, and if I'm not doing it as fast as I can, I'm wasting money. So that's another thing that's really hard for me to stop working all day and all evening and all weekend because I need to finish this job to get to the next one. And there's more anxiety. That's such a that, good that's point, Kathy. That's in the beginning that really is. Yeah, and I, and I feel like, just real, real quickly, I feel like throughout. that has a big, big, uh, big impact too because you have to have time to think and learn and just really work on your business if you're going to progress. And I've had a real struggle with that because I'm like, well, I'd love to work on my site and think about my process, but I'm going to be taking away from time that I'm actually making money when in the long run, I'd be making a lot more if I can refine my process more. So I think that coincides with that as well. Yeah, but, absolutely. Well, that, that doesn't mean you need to respond to your clients over the weekend. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I, I take weekends like to, to do tasks that take like a lot of thought because our team isn't online, um, you know, so, so it's not like I work the whole weekend, but like, you know, maybe a couple hours Saturday morning, I like to get up, get coffee, knock out some work. Um, I'm a big fan of like Sunday night, just getting the week kind of straight, get a few things out of the way. Um, I, I think I've mentioned this on a past episode, maybe productivity wise, but if you're answering emails, there are things out there like uh, Boomerang for Gmail and you can send it, you can schedule it to go out like early Monday morning. I mean, so even if it's Saturday, write the email back, send it early first thing Monday morning and then it'll go out. You, it's out of the way. You're not thinking about it. And then your client's not like immediately writing you back on Saturday, like Saturday morning, like, okay, well, since you're working, why don't you do this? Yeah. That's, That's a good, my, idea. my email app does that. Yeah. I, I like that feature. Yeah. Nice. There's something I used to do. Um, so I may be one of the only folks here who's not on freelance right now, but I freelance for you know 10 years or so before I took the job that I'm currently at. And one of the things I used to do, was, um, and I'm sure everybody does it because you kind of have to for taxes and everything, is just track, um, I would track my income on an annual basis and I would break it down by quarters and sometimes even months and go, okay, I'm not salaried, but if I were salaried, here's what my average would be right now. And for some reason that helped me escape that fear of, well, I just need that next project to, to make more money. I just knew that if I had a set work schedule where I could get a certain amount of work done every week, um, I would be on pace to have X amount of dollars by the end of the year. And as long as I was on pace for that, the anxiety to take the next client project and like it, it no longer felt, I guess, like I was, you know, a train laying down the tracks right, right in front of me. I, I was like, I, I had, I was able to have a little bit of faith to go, you know, I've averaged X dollars in the past. There's no good reason why I won't continue to average. Um, in fact, I'm probably getting better. And for whatever reason, just thinking about that kind of helped. So I don't know if that's helpful to you guys, but I know that was a big lifesaver for me because I'm, I'm like Corey. I had a lot of anxiety um, and that's something I've had to work through as well. That's yeah. really smart to do. Yeah. I think I'm going to bring up kind of something that I have kind of done well that I think definitely helps me with the burnout and stuff. Um, um, definitely more than Corey because, in, but I, Corey, I think is, is maybe learning the value of this is I I've been really good about allocating something that is taking stuff off of my plate as much as I can. So, you know, if, if, if I'm not the best person, because I want to act like I can do it all, I can fix it all. I can solve all the problems. I'm smart enough and by, by, going it, I'm going to do it. If I can get away from that mindset and let other people do what they're really good at and do hands off, mm -hmm. I tend to do a lot better. Um, I'm, I'm a lot better this year than I was last year. I'm, and it's not because I'm more, you know, peaceful or anything. It's because I, I can't do it all. You know, I, I'm, I'm forced to do it. And then I realize, oh, wow. You know what? Corey is much better at doing this than I am. I need to not even poke my nose in it. You know, I don't even need to worry about it. Lisa's good at doing this. So if you can do that, you know, if you if you're in that situation, if you're a solopreneur, it's a little bit different. But, you know, well, that's interesting you say that because that's kind of what how I feel, why um, why I turn to focusing on something else the back end has never been my strength. You know, SEO is not my strength. I can do on page SEO, but I'm not an advanced, I'm not expert at it. You know, there's 
a lot of things. I like to stick to what I know. So that's part of why um, also what helped me feel, go into just more staying on front end and just design because, um, you know, I just found that's what made me happy. So why do all the little, all the things that I, I realize that's not my, you know, it's not, I'm not the best at that. So, so yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, that was the big change I made this year was, you know, um, hiring David Elster, you know, freelancing to do a lot more of the heavy lifting that was really bogging me down because it did, it would just take a, a, a quick project and drag it out into something so much more stressful for me because I'd have to learn, you know, like, okay, there's a point where you want to learn and get better at what you do, but there's things that I just don't need to do if somebody else can do them better, right? Yeah. So, and he's just been a godsend because things just go, I'm not afraid anymore. You know, I know if I can't figure it out, he will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's why our team keeps growing. And like, you know, we went from uh, myself and David and, the, you know, now, I mean, all of a sudden we have like 12 people. It's because we're like, I don't have time to do this or this is my specialty. And then we'll like hire somebody to do one task. And we're like, that was actually really nice. Hope you stay on, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll figure out a way to, to keep you at least part time or something. But uh, what, and David, to your point, a little bit ago, you you said the famous quote of, you know, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I completely believe that. But I love designing websites, but I don't enjoy getting content from clients. And I don't enjoy the administrative right. parts. And I don't enjoy database migrations exactly. or anything like that. So <laughs> inevitably, no matter what you do in any industry that you love, it's going to come with other things. So I think you guys are hitting on a great point of, you know, surrounding yourself with people who maybe have strengths that you don't or have interests that you don't to help you stay away from that burnout. Yeah. And that brings it all back to community. I mean, if you know people, you know, you make these friends and uh, who are in your same industry and kind of everybody has their own little things that they love to do and are really great at. Um, I mean, it's just so awesome that you to, to why not try to provide that for yourself. Sarah has some, she's, I, I know she had several more points that she wanted to make and stuff. So Sarah, why don't you go ahead and talk about some of the things that you can do to help with the brand? <laughs> oh, there's, I mean, there's a bunch of things, right? So um, getting your food on track and I would say like energy type things. So I gave up coffee this year and I do have some other health issues. So that's part of why I'm doing all this, but I think it also lines up with this. So, you know, if you're living on fake energy of caffeine and sugar for your whole day, then you just like go, 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 go. And it's really hard to actually relax. It's really hard to sleep. You're not getting as good quality sleep. And there's something about being a little bit more steady in your day. So having healthy food and drinking water and not filling your life with like fake energy all the time, that stuff can make a really big difference. I think exercise is a huge one. Um, I used to be a runner and it was the like it just was the best way to like let all of that energy out um, and let all the stress out of the day and just get it all out there. And I can't run anymore, but um, what I can do is yoga and I'm not good at it and I never want to do it. Like I never, <laughs> ever, ever want to do it. But every time I do it, I feel better. Like I just feel so much better and I need to be actually making choices to put it back into my day because when I do it, it feels really good. And I think that's the same for any exercise, whether it's just going out for a walk or some sort of sport that you enjoy. Or like at the moment, my goal is literally 10 minutes of yoga. It's not a lot. Like I can fit 10 minutes in, like we can all do something. Um, so I think that stuff makes a really big difference. Um, I think like things like getting glasses is, has been really helpful for me. But you know, making sure that you're getting that stuff tested because eye strain, we're sitting the whole day at our computers. Um, there's like little things on your phone where you can um, set it so that it, it takes away the blue from like 6 p.m. or whatever so that then it's a yellow screen so your eyes aren't like being in the wake-up mode. There's oh, some apps man. you can get for your computer that stops the – it changes the amount of flashes that you're – like your screen isn't just on all the time. It's kind of flashing and you can, there's these apps, I'll find the link. Um, but you just install this thing and it changes the refresh rate, which then reduces eye strain. Um, there you go, refresh rate. Terry just reminded <laughs> me of the proper name. Um, so those things can be really helpful for eye strain. Um, yeah, headaches are uh, a That's all I can think of right now. Have been. Yeah, well, those are, some, those are some great things. I mean, I totally agree. I mean, exercise in any shape, form, getting up, 
moving away from the desk, you know, standing desks are now all the rage. You know, I have a mat. <laughs> I can't yeah. do it. I just can't. Yeah. My Nathan, dog Nathan does like it. it. Don't you do it, Nathan? Don't you have a standing desk? Yeah, I love it. I mean, you have to be really careful. Like, you can't do it too much. If you do it, like, all day, you know, for extended periods of time, you'll get, like, hip and back issues. But, um, but yeah, periodically, like, standing and then, like, uh, taking a break to sit sit down in a chair at your desk or, or to, you know, what I would do is I would stand for an hour and then I'd grab my laptop off my desk and I'd work from the couch for an hour <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then I'd get back up and I'd stand for a while. And honestly, just in a weird way that in and of itself felt like a change of scenery. <laughs> which is kind am, of, am I, am I dreaming this or did you have a bike at your desk at one, one time? time? Yeah. Yeah. So like <laughs> I got, right. <laughs> like, I think it was like last winter or two winters ago, I got real crazy cabin fever and i had my um i had my road bike up on a bike stand so that you can like bike indoors and i just scooted it all the way up to my desk and i just biked while i worked <laughs> I, I actually uh, last year i got to tour uh GoDaddy headquarters uh down in the phoenix area and there was like guys like on treadmills and bikes like with their laptop Movement for me. I don't know. I would, yeah, I it's not super productive. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> hard to concentrate, but yeah, they were doing it. I wanted to say one thing about exercise. Um, I, I've become really big on emulating successful people. And um, Tim Ferriss, I think everyone's heard of Tim Ferriss. He has a, I think it was a podcast originally that he turned into a book where he interviewed successful people in all different types. Tools of Titans. Um, yep, Tools of Titans. So he interviewed like celebrities, um, athletes, CEOs of successful companies. And uh, I haven't actually read the book, but I saw an interview with him. And he said the one thing that was always common with across all these people is they started out their day with exercise. And so I think that goes without saying, if all these successful, extremely successful people are so big on exercise, then, you know, it's probably something that's going to be helpful and, and healthy and uh, overall going to help your business as well. I tried, um, I signed up for Pilates last December and I tried to go in the morning and suddenly it's become so popular at the studio that the only openings are at lunchtime, surprisingly. I thought everybody would go at lunchtime. So I started popping in the lunchtime classes and I tell you my afternoons just go so, I'm so re-energized from that. So there's just any exercise anytime, right? My neighbor right. comes with her dog and we go for a half hour walk in the morning and then I get the Pilates in the afternoon. So that definitely helps clear the head, gets the body going, a little less cocoa. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, Terry, yeah. how's that mic, Terry? Terry. Well, let's oh, try it out. Uh, oh, boom. Even little micro exercise sessions help. If your eyes are getting drowsy, get up, walk the house, walk around the house, go check the mail, do something, your subconscious mind might clear up that problem that you're dealing with. And if you don't deal with each problem individually, they all add up as one of the causes of burnout. So uh, just five minutes, get up, walk around. Um, get a hobby. We have time for what we make time for. Uh, there's there's not really any excuse to uh, say, well, I don't have time for it. I've got too much work. This whole episode has been full of suggestions on how to schedule your time so that you can have time for hobbies and exercise and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, again, if you're not doing what you like to do and you keep doing it, like you guys have been talking about, outsourcing your work basically get someone else to do it that will do it in less time so you don't have to do it and stress about it uh just a balance in everything really just balance it all <laughs> another thing i wanted to mention was um for some people burnout is a symptom of more than just overworking like for some people it could be something medical or it could be you know like people talked about anxiety or um, other things going on. It doesn't hurt to go and see a doctor. Um, so that's how I found out that I wasn't very well was by going to a doctor and it was really helpful because it made me change the way I was managing things. So for some people, it's going to be important to go and see a doctor and it never hurts to just do an annual checkup and just say, these are the things that are going on for me. Could it be more than just I'm overworked? Like, do I need to look at anything else? So 
I think yeah, that's I, I, what I think, to uh, You know, I, I mean, everybody's situation is different, but on top of work, I mean, you've got, you know, you might have kids, you might have a family member you're taking care of, you might have all sorts of other issues going on in your life. And they all, dogs. They all kind of dogs. <laughs> <have a> dog. <laughs> <laughs> who, who has dogs? <laughs> Every time I talk to Tim, he's at the dog park. The okay, dog. That, that right there is a coincidence because I only go once a week. And David happens to call me every time I'm at the dog park. <laughs> yes, go on, Corey. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm just saying, I, I, you know, everybody else, you know, on top of work has, you know, has their own things going on that keep them busy. And like for me, my release is my family, but at the same time, you know, a couple kids and. It, it, it's it's a lot of work, you know. You roll out of bed and like immediately, like you know, you're changing a diaper and cleaning up like spilled Cheerios, and then you know, so and, so and it, it goes in the blink of an eye, Corey. And then I, I was sitting with my husband this morning before he left for work, and I said, "What are we going to talk about when I'm done working? You know, when I when I finish these projects and I have nothing else on my mind, we're going to sit there and stare at each other." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so to Terry's point, those micro exercises, mine are like every hour I go in. My, my wife now um, is at home, so I, I go in, check on the family, get a drink of water, and then they're, you know, I have like three miniature tasks that I have to do. So that's kind of my micro exercises, like take this poopy diaper out to the trash can. and uh, <laughs> So, so that kind of helps me out. Something what? else you can oh. do too. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's all you. Okay, I was just gonna say I don't think we've talked mentioned it, but um, if you're a uh, if you work at home, just leave out of your house. Maybe try going to a cafe once or twice a week or something. Um, it, anything to kind of change up your routine because that can get really old and redundant and and contribute to burnout. So definitely. Go ahead. My wife and I have a rule um, about bedtime that's really helpful. Um, not talking about work. Um, in the bedroom. So like if we are in bed, you can't talk about work at all or, or anything that's like task related. So like if you want to say in DR, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you just say you're awesome, that's great. Or you want to talk about something you're passionate about or something you were thinking about a book you read, that's all great. But it's like, don't talk about stuff that I have to do right before I go to bed. So, so she doesn't want you to talk about your uh, modeling career. <laughs> <laughs> that's strict. Well, <laughs> that's the hobby. Say something inappropriate, but <laughs> <laughs> don't turn red, Nathan. <laughs> I, will do it. I will do it. So we we keep saying that having a hobby is great for avoiding burnout. So that's your hobby, right, Nathan? Is is the modeling? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, I also wanted to confirm what Sarah was talking about on checking with your doctor. Uh, I was feeling really bad for a long time. I'd have these severe headaches. It would knock me out for a couple of days. And then I started feeling stressed out because I couldn't keep up. And then I got burned out. Well, I went, it turns out, you know, it took four or five months, but getting me on some high blood pressure medicine has made it, the headaches are gone. I'm sleeping a lot better. Oh. I'm a lot more productive. So yeah, if, if nothing else works or whatever, you, well, even if you're not burned out, you need to go see a doctor every year, right. you know, <laughs> especially when you're old. Like, <laughs> like yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I was going to you out, Kathleen, but. Thank you, Terry, but I'll be almost one here. <laughs> Josh knows this. I mean, that's, uh, that's great advice, Terry. I mean, Josh knows last year we were both at WordCamp Columbus, and I actually went to the emergency room. Uh, it was during Divi 100. I'd been working – long hours and I also have high blood pressure and you know I thought I was about ready to have a heart attack and yeah I turned turn around and he wasn't red he was green I was like oh, oh my god Nathan, what yeah you all right <laughs> and so I I had to we canceled a meetup we you know, I left the event went to the emergency room spent the you know next 16 hours or so at a hospital I mean it it turns out I was okay I wasn't in obviously I wasn't in good shape but, but I wasn't in immediate danger um, but yeah, I mean like these things, you know, not seeing a doctor and not getting regular checkups, those things can build up. And, you know, if you already have some pre-existing health conditions, you know, just not taking care of yourself in general is, uh, a, a bad, a bad choice that yeah. uh, I've made. <laughs> yeah. De definitely go to the doctor for, for a physical once a year. It's just like peace of mind knowing like, 
okay, the doctor doesn't think I'm going to die, like, you know, in the next couple months. So, so that's just like a <laughs> load off your mind right there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so I've got some more. Do you want me to hit you with some more? Well, actually, <laughs> I want to bring something up because <laughs> – I've got the the YouTube channel open as well, and Claire Turner asked, I think, a really, really good question. She wanted to know, do any of you allocate specific time for just learning or playing around with web design that has nothing to do with work? And I can tell you that for me, that is something that kind of refreshes me. You know, if I can work on something that I enjoy that's not client, that may be like, I love video editing, creating videos and stuff. You know, that's just something that I don't know enough about, but I really enjoy doing it. So when I can step away and just kind of dive into creating some video or letting some creative outlets, which I think that probably has a lot to do with it, the creativity coming out and stuff, aside from work, um, you know, really does help me. You know, I, I don't set specific time aside. But uh, now that she says that, maybe I should because there is there is a benefit to that for me that's not under the work category and stuff, if that makes sense. Definitely. I was just I, – because I was thinking I don't have any particular days or times that I do that, but I do try to leave a little bit of time each week at some point just to kind of read up on an article or – um, just do some learning or yeah, it's it's huge because you just seem to you need to have some time to reinvest in yourself And I've found to your point David and to Claire's point because uh, she had another Comment on there where you know, it really it really kind of energizes you it energizes you and helps you uh, You know avoid burnout. I think I, I yeah, Well, I just have to laugh at myself real quick and say that I think I play more than I work So that probably helps me stay pretty happy <laughs> a lot <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm still in bed. It's one. It's one of the afternoon. <laughs> I haven't even opened my laptop yet. <laughs> <laughs> Jealous. Do all my work from my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I I get you know all the emails for you know, the ET blog posts and and some other blog posts, and I see all all these things in my news feed on Facebook. I'm like, who has time to read all of these things and implement all these I mean I love them I go stress you guys out it is it's like <laughs> what a great headline I want to be able to do that but I don't have time it, it's, it's all Nathan's fault this, this whole episode right here yeah I'm like 10 episodes behind on the divination podcast they just keep Divi's piling up <laughs> I know right if only they would make it an actual audio one <laughs> yeah. hey, hey. <laughs> random, random aside, but we're actually switching. Uh, we're thinking about switching the Divination podcast over to a live stream, and that might allow us to do some changes that make the audio portion more dependable. Ooh. So we'll see. I'm I'm working right. on uh, figuring that portion out. But I agree. Uh, there's only like two or three podcast players that actually play it, so we're gonna fix that. Yeah, this awesome. Is you have totally just made my day. <laughs> Sarah kind of alluded to this in the beginning and stuff, but I will throw my little plug in there about podcasts is it does energize me when I listen to the podcast. So that is something that sparks creativity and stuff in me. I don't know what it does to you guys, but you know, I don't know if that's considered it gets a hobby. You, yeah, it gets you going, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Maybe that's my hobby podcast listening. <laughs> If I'm driving, commuting somewhere, I'll listen to like, you know, podcasts a few in a row and I get home, I'm just like pumped, just ready to like take on the day or, or conquer the next task. So I'm the you, same way. You guys drive places? Because I never leave my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's only when I'm driving my I, wife I to, to work. I do have to go to the grocery store okay. once a week. <laughs> yeah, when, I, when I'm driving, the kids are in the car and I'm listening to like Mary Had a Little Lamb and things like that. So. Since, since I never drive and my wife drives a lot, I'll drive her to work like once a week and then that's my, my podcasting time. <laughs> Am I the only one that literally listens to either a podcast or an audiobook all day? And when I don't, and except when I absolutely have to have silence. I can't even listen to music. Me, even music is distracting unless it's I like instrumental. Have like, I, I like have, it can be instrumental or Christmas, like Christmas, just the music that's coming up soon for me. So, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 can, I can listen to any, well, not any music. Some would cause me to not concentrate, yeah. but uh, 
Yeah, I'm a music guy. It helps me focus for some reason. That's the way I am. I can't listen to podcasts at all or watch videos or anything while I'm trying to code, but music is fine. I, if I'm listening to a podcast, that's where my attention has to be so I don't miss anything. But I think otherwise you're just rewinding. rewinding right, like. exactly. <laughs> But listening to a bunch of podcasts, it's it's the same effect that you get going to a big multi-level marketing conference. You get all pumped up. You get motivated. <laughs> you know, you want to buy that product. You want to spend more time on your business. Money Robbins. Right. <laughs> but uh, shoot, what was I going to say? Uh, man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Never mind. He burned out. He burned out. Man, I was yeah. so pumped for his closing thought. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I was listening. So speaking, Josh. It was going to be great. <laughs> hey, speaking of closing and parting thoughts, we've been on for quite a while now, probably about an hour. <laughs> and I want to continue with our tradition of parting thoughts, closing thoughts for each one of our panelists tonight. And we have quite a few. So let's start those now. And I'm going to start reverse order of how we introduced ourselves. And I'm going to go from right to left and let my good friend Tim start us off. How about it, Tim? All righty. So um, I'll go ahead and say all the good stuff so that you guys have nothing else to say. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would say my, my, my parting thought would be, um, yeah, have a, have a hobby, have, have something that you can uh, really focus on that turns your brain off of work mode. Um, I, I used to call it code mode. It's kind of work mode slash code mode. Um, but yeah, finding something that, that can get you off of that. So, um, I, I bought a drone like a couple months ago. It's been too hot to fly it last couple months, but that was like a, a kind of a hobby, something to do. Um, kind of like David was saying, like, you know, doing some fun video edits that w in no way was going to be, you know, turned into some monetization product or whatever, just something completely fun, creative outlet. Um, so I would say that would be my my biggest recommendation um, to avoid burnout. Thanks, Tim. Terry. Uh, remember what I was going to say, and I can use this as a close. It's kind hold of on, Terry. Play. Hold on. Save that thought. We're going to come back to you because your mic's breaking up a little bit, and we're going to save you for last. Hey, Sarah. Um. Okay. So I'm going to sneak two in because I didn't quite get them here yet. But one of my hot tips is cleaning up the house. So for those of us who work from home, for me, what I find is having a clean workspace and even just cleaning up the house, like spending half an hour in the morning and just like completely doing a real quick whip around and making the house feel really calm. For me, it means that when I'm sitting at my desk, it just that element of things isn't there. And when I'm getting up to get a drink or whatever, I don't, don't feel stressed out by the house. So it's just one element of being able to just calm things a little bit. And then I know when I get to the end of the day, it's one less thing to have to deal with as the kids are coming home. Um, but the other thing is just brain dump. I find it really useful when often for me, burnout is about the fact that I feel really overwhelmed. I feel like I've got too much stuff going on and I just can't achieve it. And I'm going to let everybody down and it's just all too much. And so for me, one of the good things is just sitting down and writing down every single project I'm working on and having it in front of me. I use to do list things like Asana, but I find it really helpful to just write it down, to write down exactly all the projects I've got going. And the other thing I use is my iPhone with Siri and I use the, um, the reminders app. So oh, like if I'm just thinking of something randomly during the day, um, something I read somewhere said that if you're thinking about it, even if it's in your subconscious, if you haven't written it down, it's going to be sitting underlying. And so you're actually thinking about it while you're doing this other stuff and it won't leave you until you've put it somewhere, like in a to-do list or you've written it down or it's just going to be bubbling and it means you can't focus on what you're doing, which means you've got more stress just sitting there. So one thing I do is I use my reminders app and I just say, hey, Siri, remind me tomorrow at 10 a.m. to whatever. And even if it's like add it to my to-do list or whatever it is, I know it's somewhere. I know it's going to pop up on my computer at 10 o'clock tomorrow. I don't have to worry about it anymore. So they're my tips. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, on a side note, did um, Sarah activate anybody else's Siri? Because she activated mine. 
you, you know, I activate Siri. my Siri all the time by saying seriously. <laughs> I think the way I say seriously must like, and Siri's like, yes, how can I help you? <laughs> like, seriously, I no. For, for those that were on last week, I don't know if you remember, but I was saying, hey, Sarah, and I kept activating Siri. <laughs> my phone was right next to me. It happened like twice in a row. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, and I, and I, I fibbed a little, I'm actually going to go back to Terry. Let's see if Terry's <laughs> mic's cleared up some and we'll go in between each one until it clears up. Here. Getting back to balance. Oh, uh, yep. We're coming back to you, Terry. Go, go, Nathan, go. Okay. Let me un unmute my mic. So yeah. Um, I, man, everybody said so many good things. Um, I can echo everything that Sarah said, and for sure, I feel like her and I are on the same page in a lot of things. Um, yeah, the the whole writing things down is huge. Um, <laughs> my mom, when I, I kid you not, one of the there's like two pieces of advice my mom gave me when I was a kid that have seen me through my adulthood so far, which is um, if you have a lot to do, do one thing at a time until it's all done, and the second thing is if something. If you can't stop thinking about something, write it down and come back to it in the morning. And so those are the two things that I feel like Sarah said those in different words. But basically having having a way to get things out of your head and and not freak out about them and not forget them because you can't just blow stuff off, obviously. Um, but uh, but yeah, I I really can't add a whole lot to what everybody said because it's been so good. So I will let the wisdom of the group speak for itself. <laughs> Let let Terry try again. Go, Terry. <laughs> Let's give it sorry, a shot. Sorry, I just sent you a message. Uh, oh, man. You got it. It's clear. Yeah, sounds okay. good. I'll just briefly say that getting back to the balance that I referred to earlier, I've got four words. Keep your expectations realistic. If mm. you can't be realistic, you're going to get blown away, and that's it. That's all I got. Kyer, you heard it first here, folks. Kyer, K Y E R. Keep your <laughs> expectations realistic. All right, Leslie, you're next. Um, okay, well, just speaking from experience, if you um, maybe can like diversify what you do, you know, if you if if you're a solopreneur like me, you know, I was just doing the whole the whole thing, the whole shebang at once. Um, but you know, I I got into guest blogging. Maybe you want to try that. Maybe if you love doing PSDs to Divi, there's a market for that. Uh, there's a market for the you know if you know how to take a PSD and and make a site. Um, there's all kinds of little things um, that that you can still use your web design skills for, not necessarily just just custom web design or just um, I don't know, just the different parts or or whatever. But um, you know, just maybe try other things and see if that if that helps or partner with somebody else. Um, that that helped me a lot. Thank you, Leslie. Okay. All right, Kathy. Oh, okay. So um, my favorite thing everybody knows is I dance. And the great thing about dancing is you can't think about anything else but dancing while you're dancing. So all the work just goes right out of your head. So that's my big stress reliever. So take up dancing. <laughs> Boom. Parting thought. Don't wait so long to come back on, Kathy, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Josh? So I'll address something that's really helped me, particularly this year. So this has helped me, but I want to offer it to the whole Divi community and everyone as a whole. But if you ever feel like you're getting to that point where you're feeling a little burnout or if you get that like, oh, I just do not want to do this right now or I, this freaking CSS piece is killing me or whatever it is, one thing that's really helped me is to look at the big picture, remember your why, and to realize that that little chunk of CSS that you're struggling with is helping your client, which is helping them grow their business, which might be strengthening your local economy, which is probably literally putting food on the table for their families. So that's something that's really helped me is realizing that the work that we're doing as web designers is so much more valuable and has so much more potential than I think we sometimes give ourselves credit for. Like we are literally helping businesses grow and, and provide for their families. I had a client last week that said over their 50% of their income is coming from their website now. And I made me think about, man, like that, the work that I did a few years ago on that site has really made a difference. And that means all the world to me. And that can, that helps me get through those struggling times. So think about the big picture. Uh, don't belittle what we're doing as web designers. 
That's Those good. are some very good wow. points, Josh. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Corey, final thoughts. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I get a hobby. My hobby is actually shooting down Tim's drone while he tries to spy on me. <laughs> while, whilst I'm sunbathing. It's kind of weird. Ew. Uh, <laughs> Thursdays. Hey, I have a thing for web developers, all right? <laughs> That web dev body, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> web dev body. <laughs> web dev slash dad bod. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dad bod for sure. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm probably not the best person uh, at the moment to speak to about avoiding burnout because I'm... Uh, you <laughs> I'm know, in the middle of it. Yeah, I, I'm honestly in the middle of it. We've been so busy. and um, But w what has been awesome in the past, and you know, I've talked to David, we're going to force ourselves soon to get back in the habit of it, but it's hiking. I live in a beautiful part of the country. I used to get up every morning at like 5 a.m. just go climb to the top of a mountain, get up like 7,000 feet high. And uh, there was just something about that that made the whole day just better in your brain. Uh, you know, focus focus better. Lack um, of oxygen? It was probably lack of oxygen, yeah. Passing out, um, getting some sleep. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's just something about uh, exercise first thing in the morning, like Tim was saying earlier too, that, that helps out. Sarah's point, cleaning. I'm one of those weirdos. I love a clean house. Everything is better when the house is clean. Um, and uh, yeah, just you know, find somebody. If, if you don't have a business partner, find uh, find a web dev buddy you can call and vent to and bounce things off of. Or a web dev body. Or a web dev body you can bounce <laughs> things off of. Um, <laughs> Ain't nothing bouncing off of this web dev well, buddy. Yeah. yeah that, Corners and acorns. And yeah, all it'll, 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 it'll just stick. <laughs> but yeah, just just know you're not alone. Um, burnout is surprisingly more rampant than you than you think in the um, WordPress and web development community. I think you know the more you go to conferences and hear certain people like Corey Miller and other people who are 100% honest about it talk, you'll realize I'm not alone. And um, you know, just try to try to do what you can to improve it. All right. And I think we should link to Corey Miller's talk at WordCamp US last year where he talked about this exactly. Yeah, and, and actually, uh, and another group I actually wanted to um, point out, which I've brought it up for, it is built on Divi, is uh, wphugs.org. Um, <laughs> it sounds kind of cheesy, but it's a, uh, yeah, it's like WordPress people who are just, you know, talking about like, hey, you know, having a rough project, really? having a rough time with this. Yeah. Oh, I'm they, have so a, there. they have a Slack you can join. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's cool just to see. Other people are going through the same stuff. So, is that, Man, that looks like a Divi site. It is a Divi site, yeah. I was on their Slack channel for quite a while. They do uh, do uh, talk to each other about stuff, and they're really open and non-judgmental. It might be worth taking a look at. Well, you guys have kind of alluded to my parting thoughts, which is something that we didn't talk a whole lot about. We briefly touched on that I find immense value in when dealing with burnout and that is having someone that you can talk to. I was telling my wife, you know, last night that, you know, I, I want to just go and I, ha I have a mentor. He's 80 some odd years old. His name is Clyde and Clyde knows everything about David. So it's really good to go and, you know, have somebody that you can tell everything to the good, the bad, the indifferent, much like writing down. I'm not a writer. I, don't like to write. I've tried. I've really tried Nathan and Sarah, but I'm just not a good writer. I'm a talker, as y'all know. Uh, so what? I call Clyde, you know, and I brain dump to Clyde about everything that's going on and it releases it. It relieves me. So if writing is not your thing, find somebody that you can communicate with, somebody that you can be open and honest with and say, hey, look, this is what's really going on. Feeling depressed, angry, whatever it is. No judgment, very important, somebody that you can trust and that's going to listen to what you have. And and mm -hmm. if they've got 80 years of experience on planet Earth dealing with this <laughs> stuff, they're probably pretty good to listen to their advice, too. So. WP Vent online is available. We Boom! <laughs> <There you go. laughs> yeah. David, that reminds me. So the one thing that no one has said that I that I have implemented um is along those lines. I actually used to be a voracious journaler, but since my job became writing, um, I kind of lost the desire to use that method. 
Um, but I did think of, I, I started researching different ways to bring a, a portion of that back. And one of the things I found were these different types of journals and stuff like that were like micro journals or micro journaling. So instead of doing a free form thousand word emotion dump into a, into a journal, it's just like setting aside three or four questions that you want to ask yourself every day and just answering those. Like that's your whole journal. It takes about five minutes. And so that's something I um, put into my planner um, are just these questions that I answer. And it literally only takes like a page or a half a page. I write down my answer to each question and it's just like a little gauge on a daily basis of where am I at? Am I, am I in a good place? Am I in a bad place? And if I can look back in a given week or month and go, wow, I had a lot of days where I wasn't in a great place, then it's time to start going, okay, maybe I need to address something. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot here, Nathan. Do you mind sharing your questions with the show notes or are they too personal and private? No, no, they're not too personal at all, but uh, I think they're going to be different for everybody. Like my yeah. questions. That's um, examples. Yeah. Yeah. My questions are, you know, uh, I start the day off with what am I grateful for and what am I good at? Um, and I try to keep those relevant to what I'm working on that day. And then um, I, say what were my daily victories and what could have been better. So I have four questions that I answer every day. The beginning of the day is kind of to put myself in a positive mind frame. And at the end of the day, it's to celebrate my victories and be honest with myself about the things that I could have improved. Fantastic points. Yeah. Well, hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to another episode of Divi Chat. Head on over to Divi.chat, our website. Check out our show notes. There's going to be a lot of really good takeaways from this episode. If you like the show, feel free to leave us a review on iTunes. And remember to leave your questions and comments in the sections below. Watch us on YouTube, on our website. Tune in next week as we tackle Instagram for marketing. Another great topic geared to help you improve your WordPress, Divi development, and business. Thanks again for tuning in. And thanks, everybody, for being here tonight. It's been a great, great episode. Woo Until next week, we'll see you then. Take care. Adios. 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 Adios.